Hi everybody, this is Aaron Murakami with ANP Electronic Media and I will be presenting at the International Symposium of Quantum Consciousness and Healing between April 3rd and 5th at the Alexis Park Resort in Las Vegas. You can go to 5devents.com to get your tickets because they're selling out fast. My presentation is going to be Hacking the Ether, which is based on a book I wrote 14 years ago, which is a simple unified field model based on etheric fluid dynamic principles. It's a unified field model for the layman based on very simple explanations, indisputable and established science, and it is so simple that even junior high school children can understand it. It's essentially the physics of abundance, whether this applies to consciousness, natural systems, free energy systems, they all operate on the same principles of open systems. And you're going to see that a machine that can produce more on the output than you have to pay for on the input is not only possible, it's the way every natural system already works. In 1977, Ilya Prigogine was a Russian chemist who received a Nobel Prize in chemistry for expanding, or I should say, what was considered to be an expansion of thermodynamics to include open systems, but in reality it corrected thermodynamics, which clearly states that any system which is open to its environment can freely produce more than what the operator has to input. So take note that that does not mean more out than in, that's more out than what we put in, implying that there's extra input from the environment and no laws of physics are violated. And being that it actually corrected thermodynamics, closed system thermodynamics as taught in school actually does not apply to any system in the universe because there is no such thing as a closed system. Another topic we're going to get into is how the ether is proven to exist and that it's a complete myth and fabrication that the Michelson-Morley interferometer experiments a century ago disproved the ether. Nothing could be further from the truth and not only did it not disprove the ether, Michelson-Morley actually found evidence in favor of the ether and I'm going to show evidence where Michelson was actually supporting and defending ether to the end which goes quite contrary to the modern-day physicists claim that the ether was disproven. We're also going to take a deep dive into the difference between potential versus energy and how to tap the ether to get work out of it because most physicists and engineers are using potential and energy upside down and backwards so basically they're misusing the terms and potential is actually the stuff and there really is no such thing as energy. Potential is the tangible source potential, and as it's organized, it goes through a process of disorganization, and that process of it being disorganized or dissipated back into a disordered state is what we call energy, which is basically just a verb to describe that action. And we're going to see what's necessary to tap and polarize the ether to get work out of it, because a lot of people are wondering, well, how do we tap this so-called zero-point energy this energy right out of space or right out of the ether and not only is it very simple to understand the basic process of how to do that but we're always doing it anyway and you're going to come to that realization we're also going to review gravity and inertia and the myth of curved space gravity is said to be one of the most complicated mysteries in nature but in reality it may be one of the most simplest and you're going to see what the true equivalence is between gravity and inertia without the nonsense about the uh, curved space ideas from Einstein. We're also going to explain what time is and you're going to see that it is inseparable from space itself and the reality of dimensions versus coordinates and how many dimensions to space there are and how it relates to time. And then we're going to review some real life ether hackers including myself, who have been able to develop and invent various devices that basically prove the textbooks wrong because throughout my research and with my associates, I've witnessed over 20 different technologies that produce more network on the output than the operator has to put into it. And some of these I've even developed myself. So you're going to learn who the real life ether hackers are what kind of work they're involved in, and where to learn more. In a couple of these pictures, you're going to see a few devices which are completely relevant to this presentation. 
For example, here is one electrostatic seed treatment device, which goes beyond what most people call electroculture, which is using electricity to enhance plant growth. The way that this particular system works is actually able to influence the gene expression of plants without genetic modification, which means a completely obsolete GMO with nothing more than electricity applied in the proper manner. In this picture here is a jet engine that I built which recycles this exhaust and it has my patented plasma ignition system and it runs almost purely on water and only a small tiny trace of propane. This is a Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator. I did not invent it, but what it actually is is a longitudinal wave generator. Many people use the term scalar in electrotherapeutic type devices of this nature. The Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator or MWO is the known as the holy grail of electrotherapeutic devices and this is a device that my company manufactures and it's the only one currently made in North America that is actually built to the exact specs that Lakovsky himself used. Sitting between the antennas you're exposed to a rapidly oscillating longitudinal wave which means that there is no electron current flowing and there is also no velocity to the transmission. If there's no velocity, then it doesn't take any time for the transmission to go from one antenna to the other. It's going through counter space, and it is essentially instantaneous, thereby defeating all of the false claims about light speed limitations in electrical systems. In this picture here, I have a small end machine, which is a variation of a Faraday homopolar generator. And for the last century or so, the most anybody has ever able to get out from it is some current with almost no usable voltage, fractions of a volt up to a few volts. And what I demonstrate is that I'm able to take the output and blink a neon bulb rapidly with it, which means I'm getting about 100 volts on the output, which is probably a world's record voltage output from simply extracting electricity by simply rotating a magnet in space. So this is truly a space-powered system that is directly tapping the ether. And then this system here, I'm using my patented plasma ignition system to actually run a motor with a high-speed discharge, and I'm able to get the resistance to disappear out of the circuit so that when the capacitor discharges, it's not discharging against any resistance. It's actually a negative resistance phenomenon, which means the capacitor is able to discharge at an accelerated rate and when you take a certain amount of potential and you discharge it into a shorter period of time the power goes through the roof and I'm able to get the capacitor to discharge an entire order of magnitude faster than is normally thought possible by conventional science. So again come join us at the International Symposium of Quantum Consciousness and Healing April 3rd through 5th at the Alexis Park Resort in Las Vegas. Go to 5D Events dot com that's five and the letter d that's a digit five and the letter d events dot com all one word five d events dot com to get your tickets